Welcome back. Oil prices above $50 uh, stayed, about 53 actually. We are watching oil this morning because concerns are lingering as rising U.S. supply is offsetting OPEC's production cuts as global markets react to uncertainty caused by President Trump's hardline immigration policies. Now here, joining us now with an outlook on oil is Shork Report founder and oil analyst Stephen Shork. Stephen, good to see you. Great to be here, Thanks Marie. so Thank much you. for joining us. So characterize the market for us right now. What is driving things? Uh, well, right, right now, essentially, we're now getting the preliminary numbers uh, forecast on whether or not or how well OPEC is complying with its self-imposed uh, quota system. And so you're getting some, of course, bullish rhetoric or hawkish rhetoric, I should say, uh, from the producers themselves. It still remains to be seen, but the market is still taking a wait-and-see uh, approach. So we've been, since OPEC made the announcement in November, we've been pretty much spot market in a range uh, in the low 50s to the mid 50s. And Essentially, that's where we are holding at this point. St Stephen, what about at Stegen McDowell? What about increased production yeah. coming from the producers here in the United States? And is there any chance that ra that ramps up more quickly than some people are anticipating, which would drive prices oh, lower oh, potentially? I uh, yeah, Dagan. Uh, so certainly. So from this point of view, we have to keep in mind that U.S. production started to fall sharply at the first half of 2016. But that fall plateaued over the summer, and uh, production has been rising uh, since August. And in fact, since OPEC made its announcement, U.S. producers have put an additional 250,000 barrels a day of oil back onto the market. Now, this is important because since the crash in oil prices in 2014, for every one barrel that the U.S. producer took off of the market, OPEC and Russia put on the market two and a half barrels. So now the fact that OPEC is saying they're going to take some, bar some of these barrels off, U.S. producers are indeed putting those uh, oil back, putting that oil back onto the market. So even if we get 100 percent compliance this month with the OPEC quota, OPEC will still be producing 200,000 barrels a day more oil today than they were last year. And that comes in the fact that U.S. production is on the rise. So, and we're seeing this because from the standpoint of rig counts, U.S. Uh, companies have added rigs, that is oil drilling rigs, week in, week out, nine out of every 10 weeks since August. If we look at the producer, the producer has never sold more futures contracts ever before. Now, keep in mind, a producer only wow. sells a forward contract to hedge forward production. So the telltales are there that U.S. production is on the rise. And this is a great thing because we're seeing it here. Here in my home state of Pennsylvania, we have three steel mills that are adding ships and putting workers back to work to make the seamless pipe needed for the infrastructure, for the build out. So this is indeed a prospect of good economic growth in the coming, in, uh, coming into the new year. So just to be clear, you said for every one barrel being taken off by the production cuts, Two and a half barrels are being put on. Yeah, exactly. By so we US had this producers? big run up by U.S. producers. So wow. we had this big run up in, in oil prices. A lot of it was stemming from we had, the, you know, we, we, uh, OPEC was going to cut going into Doha meeting right. earlier last year. It didn't happen. So OPEC was able to jawbone the prices higher from $25 a barrel up into the $40 barrel range. And while they were doing this, Iran specifically and Iraq were adding, a, and Saudi Arabia, excuse me, all of OPEC, yeah. was adding a significant amount of oil to the market as they were talking prices up as were the Russians. So the U.S. producer pulled back. Now, keep in mind, OPEC did U.S. producers and Canadian producers a tremendous favor. They forced them to retrench. They forced them to become more efficient and more productive. So U.S. producers, Canadians, are bringing oil to the market at greater margin than they were prior to the run-up, uh, the uh, downturn in prices yeah. in 2014. Before so you go at the end of the day, yes. Yeah. No, go ahead, Stephen. Finish your thought. So at, the end, so at the end of the day, the U.S. Canadian producer is stronger than ever bringing oil to the market, and they're going to be that much harder to compete. So with all that oil they brought back to the market, they're going to be more than happy and more than willing. There was a study put out by the Dallas yeah. Fed last summer. What price do you need to see to bring significant amount of oil back to the market? And this was posed to 150 executives in the oil and gas industry, and 150 of them, the majority of the responses came exactly where oil prices are today. So when we look at producer hedging, when we look at what's happening at the back end of the forward, uh, at the back end of the forward curve, is indeed we're getting a lot of telltales that U.S. production is strong and it's going to be very strong coming into 
uh, this summer driving season. All right, and we didn't even speak about Russia and, and President Trump's call with Vladimir Putin. I don't think anything came out well, of that in that regard. Real quick, did you? Well, we'll uh, well, absolutely. No, look, it's, it's a situation where uh, the Russians have, have played uh, the markets, that is, over the last two years in a very cagey fashion. Uh, they're on board, uh, supposedly, with these production cuts, okay. but uh, they've given themselves a fail-safe. So, no, I don't expect to see any sort of significant cutbacks in Russia uh, oil production, regardless of whoever is in the White House. Stephen, good to see you. Thanks so much for the analysis. Great analysis, as always. Thank you, Maria. We'll see you soon. Appreciate Stephen it. Short there. Coming up